Oh my gosh, you all. It is day four of Romance Genre Con right here in the public library. We are coming to you live from Kansas City, Missouri, but we don't care where you are as long as you're writing romance. Thank you for hanging out with us all week. I'm Morgan from Midcontinent Public Library. We are on day four of Romance Genre Con this year. We're all about the business. So you have seen how to get your books into libraries. Um, like 75% of readers find their romances at libraries, just saying thanks RWA for that stat. Also, uh, we talked a little bit about audiobooks, how to get in them, the way you need to market them. Then we did a big switch and we went to Elizabeth Essex with her awesome craft class on having how your characters can reveal themselves. Now, it's time for the big business indie panel. So coming at you right here, we've got Cynthia Fales, author of Spoonful of Sugar Plums. She's hosting us for us tonight. We've got powerhouse Rachel Van Dyken. We've got a uh, coolest person I've ever met, Jen LeBlanc. And oh my gosh, we have got the VA bossy pants herself here to talk about the business with you. So here's what I need you to do. I need you to listen. But before you start listening, I need you to write down your questions because tonight is about you and the information you need. So I'm giving you permission to ask whatever question you need to ask to make your business stronger because the public library believes in you. We believe in your business and we like to read the stuff. So write us more stuff. And to do that, you need a strong business. So tonight, after we're done, there's gonna be a tiny little survey. Please, please, please write that for us. A big thank you to all the authors out here who support us. You all have been amazing about showing up, about being positive, and always agreeing to come perform at Romance Genre Con, and we thank you for that. Also, thanks to Midcontinent Public Library. Not every public library out there supports romance, not like we do. That's right, people. It's the Romance Olympics right here. Without further ado, Cynthia Fails. Woo! Romance Olympics. I love that, Morgan. Thank you so much for the intro. And thank you so much for tapping me on the shoulder to moderate tonight's awesome panel discussion. I am uh, more excited than you might think because I am a children's book author who made the pivot into romance. Um, so now I'm going to learn just along with you all. So make sure not only that you're writing down your questions, but that you're putting them in the chat so that we can see them and we can ask the authors about how they take whatever it is that they create, their ideas, turn them into books, and then turn that book into a business. We can't ask those questions unless you type them in the chat. So before we get going and start anything, I wanna make sure that I intro our panelists this evening. Uh, and while I'm doing that, you all say hi and let us know where you're watching from. From. Put that in the chat so that we can shout you out after I give these quick intros of our lists. All right. So y'all are typing. I'm going to go ahead and introduce Miss Jen LeBlanc, who is a Colorado girl living in a Hollywood world. She is a storyteller in words and imagery, and she writes wildly original illustrated Victorian erotic romance and likes to hang out at the Ripped Bodice Bookstore and Bar. That sounds like a lot of fun <laughs> in West Hollywood. Uh, she's published in ebooks and print, and she also has her books licensed by Chapters Interactive for choose your own adventure style mobile gaming. So dope. One other thing that you don't know about Jen, or maybe you do, and I'm just finding out all this stuff, is that she is the creator of the illustrated romance. Uh, she wrote, photographed, and published the first ever illustrated romance and is the queen of Studio Smexy a groundbreaking custom and stock photography studio in LA and Denver that specializes in novel covers. Not just novel covers, but making sure that she's working with authors and publishers to create powerful, inclusive, and representative cover images in an ever-changing publishing landscape. So excited that Jen is joining us today. Um, also on the panel, Miss Alexis Morgan Rourke, 
who also goes by Lexi. And you heard um, Morgan mention that VA Bossy Pants is joining us. That is Alexis. She is a virtual assistant, virtual assistant by day and an author by night. Uh, she is also a fan of all things organization and hopefully uh, she will take your questions about how to get organized as an author and help you learn how to um, think about it, not just with your author hat, but with your business, organized business persona hat as well. Uh, she, in addition to being an author, is also an avid reader and a hopeful romantic, which I love. Hopeful romantic. Maybe we'll talk about that tonight, too. All right, Alexis, I'm so glad that you're joining us. And last, but certainly certainly not least, we have Miss Rachel Van Dyken, uh, who is the number one New York Times, Wall Street Journal, and USA Today bestselling author of Regency and Contemporary Romances. When she's not writing, you can find her drinking coffee at Starbucks and plotting her next book while she's watching Guilty Pleasure TV. She keeps her home in Idaho with her husband and her adorable son, and she loves to hear from readers. So readers, authors, again, make sure that you're checking in. I see a lot of people who have tapped in already and I'm excited. It looks like Amy Fisher is cheering us on, saying yay team. Uh, looks like we have Jenny from Kansas City checking in and Lisa from Springfield, maybe Vi from Kansas City, Jen is, uh, oh, Elizabeth is cheering on Jen. I love it, I love it, I love it. Hello from the state for lovers in Virginia. Alexis, thanks so much for joining us this evening. Um, who else, who else, who else? We've got a lot of comments here. I love it, I love it, I love it. Sandy is popping in from Los Angeles. Love it, you all have a lot of cheerleaders. Uh, without further ado, I'm gonna stop talking so much about who they are. I'm going to let you see how awesome they are for yourself. So here are our awesome panelists. You all, my goodness, if this were in person, I'd ask for a round of applause and a standing ovation for all three of our panelists because they're awesome. But <laughs> I'm so excited to join you all this evening. <laughs> thank you so all right. much. Yes. Hey, thank Sandy. You. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. All right. Um, Again, those of you that are tapping in with us tonight and who are tuning in for this panel, make sure that you say hey to let us know where you're tapping in from. We've got a lot of Kansas City. I've seen a lot of L.A., uh, the state for lovers. Virginia is here with us as well, which is just perfect for romance. Right. <laughs> All right. Hey, Lizzie, no. uh, so we we have. Um, an awesome conversation that we're gonna we're gonna start tonight, and hopefully this will spark um, a lot of ideas for the authors that are joining us this evening, that are watching uh, this panel discussion. So we'll be talking about uh, writing as a business, and I want to start there. Right, this is um, a panel full of authoresses. Do we call ourselves authoresses, <laughs> authors uh, who are who are doing amazing things, right? And we have all found a way to take writing and turn it into a business. So I want you all to tell us a little bit about the story arc of your business journey and what was the catalyst that sparked your writing journey? Anyone can jump in and start. <laughs> okay, I'll start, I guess. <laughs> um, <clears throat> all right. I, I graduated from um, Metro State with a degree in photojournalism and documentary photography in 2007. And then the newspaper started crashing and closing all over the country. Um, and that kind of got my brain started working on doing other things. At the same time, I had um, three daughters in high school who were all obsessed with Twilight. <laughs> and so I decided I had to figure out why I was being dragged to a bookstore at midnight yep. to buy a book for my rambunctious teenagers who should have been like, I don't know, sneaking out of the house at midnight, not laying around reading books. And um, I read it and I thought it was fantastic, but I wanted more. 
So I started Googling and that's how I learned about romance. I mean, I think I'd, I'd known about it forever, but I'd been more of a Stephen King girl. And um, I found through Googling something akin to vampires, books with sex. <laughs> I found um, Teresa Medeiros, who's a historical writer, has a vampire mm -hmm. series, and the Black Dagger Brotherhood. Oh, okay. I read those. And <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I binged like, I don't even know how many books. I had a Sony reader and I got them all from the library, the Denver Public Library, um, and just binged everything they had. And I woke up one day with an idea and that's when I started writing. And a month and a half later, <laughs> which is unheard of ever for anyone, like I can't, I can never recreate that. A month and a half later, I had a um, it was about 175,000 word <laughs> first book yeah Ooh. no like I don't know where <laughs> That's how, like I don't remember uh, that time of my life <laughs> but I ended up with a book right and then I started researching how to publish that book and <clears throat> I decided I wanted to like get my website you know my background is in journalism and marketing and that sort of thing so I wanted to get my name out there and I decided, you know, primarily I'm a photographer, so let's shoot a cover. And it was right before the iPad was set to come out. So I was like, well, why? I grew up loving books with illustrations in them. You know, Alice in Wonderland's my favorite book. Um, I love Charles Dickens. My books are set in the late Victorian era. Charles Dickens books were published as serials. So I kind of had this idea of serializing and illustrating my books with photographs. And a year, about a year later and a lot of photo shoots and a whole lot of chaos, I had a complete novel, which nobody wanted to buy because they didn't understand the pictures in there. They wanted the book, but not the pictures. So then I had to do it all myself. And that's how I ended up celebrating this movie. Um, and also falling back cover photography because authors and pictures were like what we want. That level of photography of art, because this was back in the women, there wasn't back in published authors. Especially nothing that was like anywhere near being the first one. So that's what happened. Here I am. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I love it. I saw you oh, no. there. Alexis, you were raising your finger. No, I was trying to, you know, obviously not smoothly at all tell her we can't. <laughs> so yeah. No, my <laughs> your audio is today has been a day of faux pas. My headphones <laughs> pause. Sorry. No. <laughs> pause. I love it. Alexis, how about you? What was your pets are writing? Really? I was hoping Rachel would go next. Okay. <laughs> Um, you want to follow Rachel? Well, it, okay, good point. So, <laughs> excellent point. Jumping at it. Um, let's see. I I turned how old am I now? Oh yeah, I turned fifty this year. So I've been reading like forever, and I must say that growing up in Texas, my I mean, if you look over, okay, for me it's over here, but for you it's the reverse, but you see all those category romances, all those Harlequins, those are nothing but Harlequin category romances. And I have another bookshelf. You go this way, you can see more Harlequin. I mean, this is my entire romance bookshelf and it's not all of them. So I've been reading for a really long time. And okay, fine, part of it may have started with um, penthouse letters, but anyway, whatever. So um, uh, when you go to the grocery store, that's what you would see. I mean, and that's what was you know at eye level and that's what I could grab. And and so I've been reading Harlequin for forever. Um, I know I've read some of the more popular ones like Woodwiss. I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly. Otherwise I'll get a flaming email. <laughs> and um, you know, I've read all of her and then Beatrix and then, um, uh, gosh, you know, I can't think of anybody, but I started with uh, historicals and then I also read some contemporaries. And then if you look over there, you'll see some like candlelight romances, which are really, really old, like Robin Donald. So I've been reading category romance and romance in general for a really long time. And my particular career path was a tad bit different because I was in a religious nonprofit. Mm 
and it was a consuming job. I mean, consuming job. I had an 8,000 volunteer workforce, volunteer workforce that I was working with, and it was one of the highest level, I guess you could say, African Americans in this particular church, and it was a very demanding job, and so I needed a break. And I said um, at the time, so I'm not bringing this up to hurt anybody, but at the time, Alora's Cave was putting out submission calls and they would say, hey, if you've got a um, I think one was called Sex Bites or something like that. Write us a book or write us a little novelette where texting is the thing. I mean, this is how far back we're going, which really isn't that far. And then if you've got this kind of book, write this. And so I'd always dabbled with stories. And it's usually I'll admit it, the guy who got away in high school. Well, I got him in stories. And then, um, so then I started writing these stories for Alora's Cave, but there was no way that I could publish them because of the day job. Um, so they sat and they waited. And then um, I finally eventually quit the day job and I've been writing since. And I've got a bunch of stories that I am finishing this year. Millie uh, is my editor and my love. And um, thanks to her I and my huge manga support system, I am finally getting things finished. But so the, my path to publication, my path to writing has been a long time coming. Mm -hmm. You know, I went to school, got an MA in pastoral theology and all these other things. And so I, you know, have, we have three kids though. You know, the youngest will turn 17 and all of that took precedence. So this is the first time I'm really putting it in the forefront. Of course, last year, I got a little derailed. Bought and sold a house during a global pandemic. So that was a little bit challenging to get any writing done. But this year I'm finding my footing and um, hopefully, no, not hopefully, I will get things done. In fact, my first publication will be, um, in addition to the short stories that I have out there, will be a Vela coming out in September. I'm giving it to Millie on August 15th. Awesome. My goodness. I love it. Did I, I, it. I, did I prattle it. on? I felt like I prattled on. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> okay. Rachel, how about you? What was your path to writing? Um, I feel like we actually have a really similar as far as like we both worked for Christian organizations because I worked for a Christian school as a counselor, which I feel like is so just like, and I got really stressed out as well, mm -hmm. um, being in an organization that you felt like you couldn't, you know what I mean? Like you couldn't express yourself in that way. And so I actually worked for the state of Idaho as well as PSR worker. And I was working crazy days and I got super bad anxiety. And so my escape yes. was going to the library, like literally going to the library. I would take yes. my clients to the library. <laughs> I would make, I'd be like, get a book. And I'd get like 15. <laughs> and, I, and I'm like, literally like you, I'd be like just pouring over them. And then finally, like randomly in my head, I, I was like, I could do this. I obviously I couldn't because my first book was horrible, but I tried and turned it in and, and, and the rest is basically history. And that was about 12 yes. years ago. So yeah, so I've been writing ever since, and yeah. But I yeah, know, I've read many of them. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm fangirling for everybody out there. Yes, I am. <laughs> Hopefully not the first one, no. Hopefully it's been like the later ones, and you're like, she's so not horrible, she's great. <laughs> yeah. I love it so much. Well, you know, we, you learn and you grow, right, as, yeah, as you go. Exactly. Awesome, yes. awesome. I okay. learned a lot, because the industry's changed a lot it's, since. It changes every year, every Ooh, year. Yeah. Can't yeah. keep yeah. up with it, yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. So um, in writing, you think about the hero's journey, right? And you, you think about uh, them entering into this new world after this catalyst. What does your new world look like? Or, or it's not necessarily new for all of you. Some of you have been in the game for a long time, right? But uh, what does the day to day, your average day look like for you? <laughs> <laughs> Pre or post pandemic, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do both. <laughs> yeah. Let's do both. That's a good question. <laughs> so go ahead and begin, someone. <laughs> no one's going to begin. Okay, I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. Okay, so, well, okay, so pre pandemic, okay. <laughs> pre pandemic, I had like, it was like nailed down. I feel like pretty well. Like, I I felt like I had, I went into my office and I worked and I had like a schedule. And then post pandemic, well, not post, even during pandemic, I was like, should we Netflix again? Like, should we watch another <laughs> show? There's like 10 seasons of The Flash. Is it eight seasons? I don't even know. We watched all of them because, like, what do you do? And I have, at the time, we were adopting. So I had a five year old and then we're adopting. Last year, now I have a nine month old. So now like post pandemic, I am in utter chaos. Like I keep kind of leaning back cause I'm trying to hear babies crying cause my husband's not here right now. And I have no babysitter, I have no nanny. And so I am literally right now, like send all the wine you possibly can. Cause my day <laughs> is like, I've been getting up at six trying to write. I've been staying up till two or three trying to write. 
and it's really, really hard to be creative. And so for all the moms out there, like bless your souls. Cause I don't know how I don't, my husband hit, he had, they had like 10, he has like 10 siblings. I don't even understand. Like she's going to be sainted in heaven because I, yeah, like I door dash way more than I should. Um, I used to be really into CrossFit. I think I've worked out once this week. So, uh, the, I have like, I don't even have pants on, but I do have shorts, but they're not like nice shorts. So like, don't be impressed with anything going on right now because I do not have anything together. And my stress, of, like my stress level. Yeah. It's like up here. So I, so yeah. So really for me, like my average a day is just like survive. And if I get lip gloss on, that is a win. If my hair is washed, I like celebrate and dance around the house. And um, and really right now, which is getting those word counts in when I feel like I'm being creative and thankfully I have a good support system that can come in and be like, hey, are you struggling right now? Because my, my son's like, oh, mama, are we going to church? Because I put makeup on. And you know it's bad when they think that when you're going to church because we actually have makeup on. And I'm like, oh, buddy, no, mom just finally like, you know, took care of herself today. So yeah. That's my day. So anyone else want to go? <laughs> that sounds fairly normal. I'm going to be honest. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. That's I can I can identify with that. Except for the little kids. I mean, I have a puppy who weighs about fifty pounds. So I mean, that's you know close. I guess more legs. It's like dealing with a furry velociraptor. But um, other than that, no. Moms are amazing. I survive it somehow. Don't ask me how, because that's another thing. I have no idea how I did. You just you survive, and yeah. then it's like, all good. And yeah. I think it's a really good lesson, actually, for people who are in this business that, like, you do what you can do. There are a lot of and there are a lot of different personalities in business, and one way to do things is not going to fit for everybody. Mm-hmm. You have to figure out what works for you, because, yeah. It's otherwise you'll just go crazy. You're going to go a little crazy anyway, because there's a lot, (laughs) but yeah. So awesome. let's um, get some ideas from our viewers. Those of you that are, that are watching with us right now, drop your ideas on uh, ways that we can navigate through balancing all of Mm -hmm. the things associated with writing and the business side of it. What works for you? Put that in the comments so that we can see your ideas. Jen, go ahead and continue. Sorry for cutting you off. No, that's okay. I don't mind being interrupted ever. Um, I'm also very used to it because of the aforementioned children. Um, I, I think I have never had two days that were the same unless I was on a very tight deadline, in which case that's like underwear pounding pajamas. Sorry, not whatever. (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes I don't even get out of bed. Pounding keys, lots of coffee. Just, you know, it's the same thing over and over for days. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I don't have two days two days that look the same because I am not neurotypical. So I can't often can't work in the same way, in the same situation, in the same kind of place. And I have to get out and do something different, which during the pandemic was impossible. Um, Cause I'm also in LA, which has some of the strictest rules for the pandemic. Um, and so, which gay, but still. <laughs> what, no Starbucks? Um, <laughs> Yeah. So getting out, which was my normal before the pandemic, wasn't something that I could do. And I haven't been able to write through the pandemic, which some amazing, wonderful, awesome people have been able to do. And like more power to those ladies and gents because, and theys and thems, because that's just brilliant. And I, I look up to everyone who has a different process than me, but I've had to accept what my process is. And it's not, it's a little off. It's a little weird. Yeah. So yeah, yeah my days there, there's nothing the same about any of my days. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, the <laughs> comments are coming in. They are um, coming in. Yeah. yeah. Megan said spinning is her outlet. That's good. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, Teresa also said walking and writing. Those are both good. Yeah. Yeah. She did one, two up as well. If you see that. She, yeah. She said she was able to write during lockdown. Mm -hmm. Uh, because she had nothing else to do, but she's retired with no kids, which probably also helps a little bit. Uh, But she said now that things are open, she's having a harder time balancing writing and life. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's definitely understandable. Alexis, what's it look like for you? How do you balance Um, things? So, so I wear 
multiple hats like everybody else that wear multiple hats. And I have to tell you, I kind of fell into the VA thing because it was, hey, does anybody need any help? <laughs> because I honestly, you know, the company I worked for, I'm trying not to be too specific, the company I work for is huge. And so I could be training somebody 150 miles away from my house one day and then 40 miles away from my house the next day and then be downtown in our main office another day. Um, but I liked it that way because sitting behind a desk was just draining for me and I, and I'm, I love to train. So when I was in that kind of framework, so I'm speaking specifically to the people who worked. When I when I was in that kind of framework, it was easier for me, especially, and that's why I had to have things plotted. When I pants, it is a hot mess. So I have to know when I sit down, what scene am I working on? Because if you only have 15 minutes and yeah. you pants, what the heck are you gonna, for me, again, oh, yeah. talking about me, so save your flame mail. <laughs> you know, when you're talking, I sit down, it's like, oh, dum de dum de dum de dum de dum de dum 15 minutes is up. What is this pile of garbage, right? So I had to know specifically whether I was in the car dictating or I was in a conference room if I could nab one, I had to know what I was writing. And I actually were produced better in that kind of a strict environment than when I left my job and then not too long after we had the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So the pandemic was hard for me and it was hard for a lot of writers and we had um, uh, yoga yogis coming in and doing, you know, uh, calming with us and trying to get us centered and focused and nothing worked. So I threw myself into the buying and selling of the house, taking care of the kids. Um, we had to stay in an apartment for about six, seven months. And that was a huge transition for my children because uh, it was like, no, you cannot be that loud. There's somebody above us. You know, I mean, just those kinds of things. So that kept me busy and not thinking about, you know, global pandemic, people dying and, and all this bad stuff that's going on. Because as an African-American, 2020 and even before, but every day you're just like, OK, yeah. What's next? Yeah. So being able to, the few times that I was able to go into my hole, close the door, put on my headphones, um, and escape really helped. Um, so for those people that are working, if you are having trouble writing, I strongly suggest, okay, you don't have to have a very strict outline, just a loose idea. Write down a couple of scenes that you want in your story and then just go into it with that scene and write that scene. Pants away, baby. But if you have if you have a limited amount of time, then perhaps having you know a little bit of a structure will help because it helped me. Um, now I do a lot of time blocking. Um, and because I used to be a Franklin Covey trainer and we really didn't get into time blocking back then. It was actually Franklin and then Covey people came in, Stephen Covey. But we really didn't get into time blocking. But now I do time blocking. I think Jamie Roundtree has a template on her website that I can share. Um, but basically, I look at my day and I know that this hour, this hour and this hour and this hour, I have to work on my client work. Um, and because I'm a night owl, 2 to 5 a.m. is like my sweet spot. So I'll do a lot of social media scheduling and newsletters and that kind of thing then. And I have tried really hard to start writing at the beginning of my day. But the problem that I have and the problem that a lot of authors have, unless you know, you're know you Rachel Van Dyken, <laughs> who, is, who is used to this a lot, little bit more than I am. I know we all feel that way. But she's got a better routine, you know what I mean, than I have. Um, I keep thinking, should I be writing? Maybe I should be doing my client work because it's not really, you know what I mean? I keep putting everything in front of my writing and I know it's imposter syndrome and I know it's all the other isms or, you know, the other syndromes, but I'm getting better at that. My support system has really helped me to to prioritize my writing. Um, so I'll stop talking now. I love that. Let's, <laughs> let's continue. Let's continue on that path because you, you started to talk about your support system and yes. and that's important, right? Supporting characters are important, not just in a novel, but in our lives. So who are those people um, that you turn to for business support as a writer or what has been an invaluable resource for you? Let's start with the first one. Where do you turn for business support? Rachel, let's start with you. Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> Because I'm like trying to think. <laughs> I saw that. I know. I like look down into the left and they're like, she's one. So, um, so for business, for like my own business, for the, for the yeah. writing business, is that the question? Yes. Okay. Yes. So for writing business, I honestly, I was a huge Googler. Googler. So like I would go out and if I didn't have the answer, I would find the answer. Um, and I'm a huge advocate for asking other authors. I feel like one thing that the indie community has really, really lost in the last few few years is no one wants to help anyone anymore. So um, when someone emails you 
email them back, like give them advice, like take two seconds out of your day, send them an email, say, look, like this is how I got started. Here's some resources. I saved them and it takes me two seconds to email them back and help them out because when I got started, I didn't know what to do. So I asked another author, Julie Lessman, and she was kind enough to send me an email back right away and like give me some resources. Like she didn't say like, do this, 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 and this, but like it was enough for me to be like, I can click on a link. And so one of the things that I did is I just started researching my butt off. I have a binder still like in my, in my office um, of all the publishers you could submit to all the different agents you could query, like all the different things that you could do. And now, nowadays, like, man, like authors have it so easy because there's so many resources out there that you can grab onto. So, um, I'm also like a huge advocate if you have someone email you that's like, hey, we're starting a new app that's doing this, or hey, we're trying link, here's Linktree that's gonna link to your Instagram, or why don't you just try to meet with this TikTok person? Like, never be so arrogant that you say no to those new opportunities. You think you're so amazing that like you shouldn't try the new stuff. And that's something that like this year has been huge because there's a ton of reading apps out there right now. Yes, they're all in China. That's totally fine. They're killing it right now. And so like I've seen a lot of authors be negative about stuff like that or like not answer their emails because like, oh, why are they emailing me? I'm traditionally published. Well, like just just try things out. So for me, the business support has been realizing that there's business everywhere and not being afraid to ask for help and not being afraid to ask other people and not thinking I'm so amazing that I don't need the help in the first place. And that's why you have like the Facebook management, the marketing, like they help you. My publicist, I'm constantly asking your questions. I'm constantly asking other people questions. I think if you wanna be successful in this business, you have to make sure you have zero ego whatsoever. Cause if you do, you're gonna get like slammed pretty soon probably. <laughs> we get humble real quick in romance writing. Like it's, it's pretty awesome. Like it's the humility comes like hard and fast. So with the business support, it's really just leaning on your other fellow writers and hoping that that they pull through for you as well, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Jen, you want to chime in on that at all? Yeah. I can't just say ditto. No. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Completely agree with everything that Rachel said. No, it's true. I mean, I, I'm part of a lot of big groups on Facebook that are geared towards indie romance. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm also on in some really small, we call it one of one of my groups, we call it the, ma the mastermind and we have quarterly reporting and we meet quarterly and we update and we have goals and we have, you know, stuff like real businesses do because we are real businesses. And I treat this like a real business. This isn't a hobby. This is my job. These are things that I have to do. And that was one thing that was missing for me. So I have this great group of, of women that I work with online and we have, we do all the big business things for our little businesses, like quarterly reports reports and goals and five-year plans and all that kind of crazy stuff that's very overwhelming when you're doing it by yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's it's so helpful to have a group of people with the same kind of places and ideals and even though now we're kind of all branching out into different spaces of creativity um we still do this because it still applies to any business to any like creative work to any kind of um self-employment type situation it still applies so it's really cool that we're lots of us are branching out in different ways but we're still using this this group that we put together which is fantastic so i think you need like you have the person that is your person who grabs your collar and says don't do that um mm -hmm. and you also grab their collar and say, don't do that and then you have bigger and bigger yes. groups depending <laughs> upon what your need is, right? Like you have different size groups. And um, I think that's what's been most helpful to me. Because, yeah, when I started, it was all Google. I mean, I literally Googled how long are books. I don't, yeah, same. I don't know. Same. Like, <laughs> yep. It was in yeah. a computer. I, I didn't like, what are, how many pages? Like words? How many okay. words? <laughs> like, and I couldn't find an answer it was ridiculous i don't know what happened but now you can google that and you'll find all these places this is how to write a book this is how many words did you need this is kind of a story arc all this other stuff and it's great to find all those resources and to have people who cut them down and present them to you as well awesome alexis how about you <laughs> um 
I wrote my notes down. Okay, so because <laughs> that's me. Um, so actually, I look at it in four different ways. So remember, I'm coming at it from two different perspectives. And you know, just tell me in the chat. Shut up. Um, so first of all, I think what Jen and what Rachel look at me calling her Rachel like we're all friends. But, um, <laughs> but Rachel and Jen said, and I look, Jen, I have your books over there too. You know, I fangirl over you all the time. But I think what they said is extremely important, and it's what I find that many. Okay, I'm just gonna say it. What many authors don't do, they don't consider it a business and they don't treat it like a business. And yeah. it is a business, honey. I mean, whatever you said about whatever way back when, it's gonna come back to haunt you. <laughs> so whatever you say on social media, whatever you put out there is part of your branding. It's part of your marketing, whether you want it to be or not. And I think that's a huge thing is recognizing that this is in fact a business. This isn't just you and your friends on Facebook. I'm going to write some books. No, no, no. It, this is a business. When you publish and you press publish and you put it out there in the world, um, then you know you are in business. Uh, when you pay for the cover or whatever. So I think that's the first thing. And then recognize what supports you need. You know, uh, one of the things I did was I worked on an, a group for um, the disabled and there's accommodations and modifications. And I think that some people need to look that up. What accommodations do you need to make in your life so that you can meet these deadlines? So, you know, and what modifications did you need to make? So simply put, if you know that you cannot meet without an external deadline, then you get somebody in your corner who's going to say, hey, this is due. Hey, have you done this yet? You know, and between you and that person, you'll know how often they need to do. They need to come at you. Um, you could also use a calendar. Um, and then another um, another way to do that would be to do to, to some people do this. I don't recommend it, but if it works for you, great. They will intentionally do a pre order knowing that the book is due. I caution against that. I would rather just give my give my editor money and let that be my deadline <laughs> versus dealing with people emailing you when your pre-orders canceled. Not that I have any experience with that. So the first thing is what kind of business support do you need? Uh, what do you lack skill wise that you need some help with? Um, I've, I've counseled a couple of people uh, asking them, why are you spending a thousand dollars plus on a Facebook ads course when you haven't finished writing the book yet? W what's the point? And then think about how much money you're spending and how much time you're spending trying to figure out something that keeps changing and you still haven't actually finished your book. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. Yeah. Number two, friends. Get yourself some friends. Um, I call them friends, friends, and friends. So, you know, your friends are the people <laughs> that are going to support you. Your friends, Jen is one of my friends. You know, I've been to Mickey's in West Hollywood with her, tucking money inside of strippers' uh, <laughs> things, because those are her friends, and, you know, chastising people who took it down. So, anyway, <laughs> this is, these are, Jen and I can go to a gay bar in West Hollywood and write and be supported by, for her friends, for me, friends. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's that kind of support system. So have people in your corner cheering you on, you know, that are not fans, which is something different. And then finally, a tribe. Uh, mm -hmm. My tribe is um, other authors. Okay, let's be honest. They they are all like in the stratosphere, and I'm still down here, you know, playing in my little mud puddle. But um, they don't look down on me. They don't have these huge egos. They challenge me. They support me. When something comes along, they say, "Hey, Alexis, did you know this was happening? Would this work for you?" And it is important to have people like that in your corner. And one of those people, I you know, is is Christine Reese. I mean, she is like way up in the stratosphere but she's always how are you doing are you okay how's your book coming on and it and it's so humbling that somebody that that's that big takes you know takes time out of her schedule for me and does she publicize it on facebook no nobody would know but i just open my big mouth but 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 that's how you know she's truly in my corner mm -hmm. i love it oh man <laughs> so many nuggets so many nuggets here i hope you all are taking notes out there <laughs> Also, if you have any questions, make sure that you put those in the comments so that we can ask these lovely ladies the questions so that you can get all the knowledge in the world to take with you. Um, there have been a lot of comments um, yes. that have come through and I wanna, wanna shout out some of them um, because they're they're really champion, championing self-awareness and acceptance and, mm. um, 
overcoming the isms and imposter syndrome mm. and acknowledging how hard and difficult yeah. that is. Yeah. And, 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 you know, I love the conversation that we're having because it's a real and honest conversation. And these are the types of conversations that actually make an impact and have a difference, uh, can create some change, right? Um, Alexis, I want to go back to something that you touched on very briefly. She's panicking a little bit now. <laughs> what did I say? Okay. <laughs> you talked about um, you creating your brand, right? Yes. And being careful about what you put on social media. So my question mm -hmm. to all of you, and Alexis, mm -hmm. I want to start with you since you kind of breached us and into this conversation. <laughs> How how do you handle privacy for social media, right? How do you balance what personal, how much personal information to share with the public uh, versus just the business side? What does that look like for you all? Before I answer that question, because this is how I am, I'm going to tip on one thing. First of all, the common misconception that a lot of people have is the definition of marketing. I will share with you a link to who is called the father of modern marketing. It starts with a K. I can't remember his name now. But people need to understand what marketing is because it's not just your logo. Mm -hmm. You know, it's everything you say, everything you do, the way your mm -hmm. books look, how you dress when you go to an event. I mean, right. it's 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 it, that is all your brand. So yeah. now your your question, privacy. Um, Alexis Lexi Rourke is not my real name. Um, don't tell my husband. He's downstairs. <laughs> okay, the Rourke actually came from in death. There's a character called Rourke. Even though I told him, yes, honey, it's from that stupid book that you like by Anne Rand, who works the, what's it called, the Fountainhead. Yeah, honey, that's what it's from. But it's really from In Death, the, that character Rourke. And then Alexis, I don't know, it just popped, right? Um, so, but as my real name, I had a separate entire social media presence because, again, I was working for a religious nonprofit and never the twain shall meet. Like, literally panic, mm -hmm. like, bad thing. Um, so for as far as privacy is concerned, um, as, as Alexis, I put it all out there. The only, I do have pictures of my children, which I didn't do for a while because again, the two could meet, mm -hmm. but, um, I have to be, I, I'm careful about putting pictures of my children and, and having things where like a location, because I've mm -hmm. seen people post like pictures of their children's certificates with like the name and, oh, this is estrogen pills. Anyway, but they'll have like the name and address, like the name of the kid's school, the kid's name and nothing's blocked out. And it honestly yeah. terrifies me. It terrifies okay. me. But I still, you know who my dogs are. People watched my house being built, but it was only in snippets. Do you know what I mean? Because what this house being built saved me. In addition to you, honey, this house being built saved me during the pandemic. So it was something that I could share that wasn't doom and gloom. So my privacy as an author, it's all out there, right? But I do shield and protect my family only on account of because I live in La La Land. I live in Los Angeles and I've seen I've seen some nasty stuff when people uh, breach that privacy. Like they can't sit down and have a meal, yeah, because fans keep coming yeah. over. You know, that's a problem yeah. I have. But you know what I mean. Yep. <clears throat> Jen, yeah. How about you? Um, I'm struggling with it a lot actually since the pandemic. I don't know why it brought it up, but I did not use a pen name at when I started, cause I just couldn't think of a good name. I, I'm happy to, to like name characters, hundreds of characters, but me, I couldn't think of a fake name for myself. I don't even, it was awful. So I just talked to my kids, most of whom were in high school at the time. And I was like, do you care? And they're like, no. And I'm like, okay, then whatever. <laughs> Like at the time I was like, I don't really know that this is gonna, I'm not gonna be a Stephen King back, you know, like whatever. So, um, and I, I put a lot in social media at the time though. So I've now, I've now since locked down my Facebook, I have a Facebook page for my books and then my profile is private for the most part. And I do make some posts public, but not a lot of them. And the place I'm most accessible is on Instagram because it's just photography. Um, and I make sure I, I'm careful about tagging things because I, I have I have friends who've been stalked, and we'll go on retreats and we won't post anything because it's dangerous. Um, but you know, I got I got followed into a bathroom on the way to a convention once, which was terrifying. 
And I love her. I'm like, she's, <laughs> I'm, she finally fessed up at the convention after two days of me <laughs> walking around being like, what, what? It's not okay. And I was like, that's really not okay. And she was really sweet about it. And we're friends now. Um, like, you know, it's friends, online friends. She's like, no, it's not. It wasn't Alexa. She did something else. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's kind of a wake up call to this, as an author, you are, this is you, you know, mm -hmm. this is, this is it. You mm -hmm. are what you're selling, especially in romance. People yeah. follow authors. They don't necessarily follow genre as much like in other genres. They don't necessarily follow authors as much as they do in romance. They, so it's, it's harder and I struggle with it. Um, and that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> I don't know, I'm like getting really antsy just thinking about it. <laughs> well, let's see if Rachel has some some tips for us. <laughs> I'm, I'm like the dumb one of the group that didn't use a pen name either because I thought no one would buy my books. I was like, oh, it doesn't matter. Grandma will buy it and it'll be totally fine. So I use my real name. Um, and we have cameras around our house, so that's nice. Um, I haven't had anything creepy. I've never really had anything creepy, creepy happen. Um, but yeah, as Jen said, like at conventions, people in elevators and they'll tweet a picture that you don't realize they took of you, like that kind of stuff, which is, which is like, it's fine, like it's fine, but then it's also it's fine, not fine. You know what I mean? Like it's one of those yeah. weird, like Jen said, you're just kind of like, oh, I don't know about this. Um, for me though, um, I talked with my husband and we had this very long discussion about like how we were going to um, build my brand because I write mafia, I write paranormal, I write young adult. Like, what do you do when you're when you have one name and you have all those? And I think someone asked that like all these genres mm -hmm. underneath you, and you know some are sweet romance. My regencies are sweet, and some are. I just wrote I just wrote an erotic romance, which I never never thought I would ever do. And so I'm like, oh no, it's BDSM, and if this kid finds this, like, you know, what do you do with all that? So like for me and Nate, like the biggest thing that we decided was we would show our kids. We wouldn't show locations. My dad is a homeland security, so like he's very, very strict about like all that kind of stuff. So like I'll send, I'll show pictures. My yeah. locations, and this is always turned off. But I'm never like, and here's, you know, like, and here we are. I never, I never say yeah. what hotel I'm at. I never, I never say even at conventions. I won't tag the hotel usually. Um, I'm very careful, but. You know, for me, like as both these ladies, very brilliant, brilliant I can be talk brilliantly said, um, your brand is you. Like your brand is you as an author. Like a lot of times I will have people, no joke, come up to my table and they will say, Oh my gosh, you're this is Nate. This is and they'll like name my family and be like, I've never read you, but I really like your Instagram. <laughs> And then right. I, in my head, I'm like, but you know what? One day you're going to get curious and one day you're going to read one of my books and hopefully you'll like it. So I always think of it that way um, on social media. Like I post all the time. Um, I had to hire someone for TikTok, be a 16 year old. So that's how old I am because I was like, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do music. How do I add music? And it was just really bad. But um, I'm a huge advocate of social media because I feel like that's how we sell our books. And I feel like the climate, we're constantly changing. Um, but one thing like um, Alexa said, said um, Alexa said, sorry, I didn't mean to say Alexa. Um, no, but one thing that I noticed was that during the pandemic, everyone just like lost their minds. And everyone was just like posting all the time and posting all these things and arguing. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, like I'm over here dying. Like my biggest thing, as I've always said, be Switzerland. Like have, like have, know your morals and know like what you are, but also realize you're a yeah. brand and people don't follow you to know your beliefs. They follow you because they want to escape, especially during a pandemic. Like, they, like yes, know who you are. Yes, Black Lives Matter. Like, yes, make sure you're making that very, very clear, but also make sure that you're not constantly pounding, like, political stuff into people and making them want to, like, get off social media, like, because everyone was so stressed out. Like, it's it was one of those things that, like, I think people took it so far on their own, like, brands. And, like, and, like I'd be getting texts from other authors being, like, I don't know, what to, like, having nervous breakdowns because they're, like, do I post about this? Do I not? Like, if I don't know, there's like lists going around and people that are posting about things that are not posting about things. And I'm just like, you're, you like, stay, like you said, like, stay, know your brand, know your marketing. I feel like what mm -hmm. you said was so brilliant and being like, this is what marketing is. And you have to understand your business, like your yes. business. And yes. like, I don't care if Matt Damon goes on and yeah. tells me to do all these things. I'm like, I don't, I watch you because I like your movies, bro. Like, I don't watch you because I want to hear you talk. Like, so I think that's, I don't know, maybe I went too far with that. But no, um, no, no, no. But you know, I do have a social really, justice brand and that's okay. Yes, but that's not everybody right. does. 
That's, and that's awesome. And that's, and you know what, post that stuff in your link tree, like make sure you have all the awareness that you need. Just remember that you, at the end of the day, like people are coming to us for entertainment, entertainment purposes, and especially when people are so stressed out and the suicide rate is so high right now and people are dying left and right. You know, I mean, we have so much going on with Asian hate and like Black Lives Matter, like there's so many bigger things out here and people are looking to us to make sure that there's an escape from all the crap that is like humanity right now. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. yeah. So that's what I'm on my <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but that's yeah, good. Yeah. It's true. It is. Yeah. yeah. It is. So we have um my gosh. Um, Again, I hope y'all are taking notes out there. Lots yeah. and lots of gems being dropped, lots of tips that are helpful for you. Uh, but also there are some awesome questions that have been rolling in. Yeah. And I wanna start with Samantha's question. She said, with so many new books being published daily in the mm -hmm. indie world, what's a good tactic for a newbie to get their name and or their book out there? Samantha, thank you for that question. Who wants to that start? is the million dollar question. It is, isn't it? <laughs> it changes every day. That's what makes it hard. Is it's mm -hmm. always different? Mm -hmm. I would say yeah. that's kind of goes back to the other question that you know we were talking about. We're like, you know, using other authors as your advocates and like using your tribe. Um, there is one author that uh, mass mailed me and like 150 other authors, and she had like this this like like I really liked your book, and then she put in a different book, and then said I really enjoyed this, this, and this. Um, can I go on your newsletter or whatever? But she sent the same email to like all these people, but she didn't know that we were all in the same group. So I was like, did you guys get this? Like, I got this too. And we were like, oh no. Like, it was just really like, mm. so like, that's definitely mm. not the way to do it. But yeah. like, I think all of us, we get DMs all the time and messages saying like, hey, can you share this? Can you, like, I always tell everyone, like, if you want me to share your book, I will 100% share it. In my newsletter, I have to read it first. But if I, if social media, like, I'll go off. Like, I, I think everyone deserves a chance. Like, we all have books, you know, we've all had to start somewhere. And I think it, you just ask someone, you join those, um, like Alexis and Jenbo said, like you join those different communities online on Facebook, you can type it in, you can even email any of us probably and ask like what groups are you part of? And we'll be like, here's what groups we're in. Like um, Bang, the Bang Book Club that Melissa Teo runs is incredible mm -hmm. um, for um, suggestions for TikTok is great. Um, Holiday Reads is another one I'm an admin in. That's a great one that you guys can go into. Um, there's so many good bloggers out there and so many of them that would help you. Um, a really cheap one, no, I can't think of the name of it. Um, a cheap one that does blast, I'll, uh, Give Me Books. Give Me Books I think is $90 and they'll do a blast for your um, new release and they'll do like some ARC. I mean, 90 bucks mm -hmm. is, is nothing for them to send it out to hundreds and hundreds of people. And then the other thing I would say is like when I started out, I literally gave away my books for free. Um, I didn't start charging more than, t more than $5 until two years ago for my paperbacks. Um, whenever I went to signings, one of the, if you get invited to signings, you're going to any signings, eat that cost because that gets your book in people's hands. Um, don't charge 15 bucks and expect to make money because those signings are not for you to make money. You're going to lose money every single time. I don't care how famous you are. Oh, yeah. You're going to always lose money. So make sure that you're just passing them out. Like, I mean, I literally would stand in line and be like, here, read my book, read my book. Like, you almost have to be a salesperson. But I mean, again, if they're, hopefully they're bored enough on the plane ride home that their your book is in their bag and they read it or end up at a thrift store and someone grabs it. So it's a lot of those little tiny things that snowball. And I always say like the snowball effect is where it's at. And like right now people are going viral that are indie authors that people have never really heard of because they are um, the word of mouth and other people are just picked it up somewhere and someone else told their friend and everyone's home because of the pandemic. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of little things you can do not to overwhelm you, but I will 100% if anyone ever wants a marketing like the, what I've done, it's gonna, I can always send it. And I know these ladies would do the same. It's it's kind of just going through when like hitting the pavement. I, I'm used to market six hours a day. I would be trying to sell my book and then I would write only three. So I think it, it, even though it sucks to hear that, like you really have to hit it hard and just know that mm -hmm. that's part of your job. Like what's part of your job during the day, I guess. That was a really long answer, sorry. That was Ooh, an that's awesome beautiful. answer. That's yeah. great. <laughs> yeah, yeah and, that's and you're, really, you're really hitting home the point that we're trying to make here that you as an author are a business, right? Yes. <laughs> and that's that's important. That's important if we're, we're trying to be honest and mm -hmm. we want uh, authors to be successful. So I appreciate you sharing all of those tips. Uh, Alexis or Jen, do you want to add anything to what Rachel said? I just think I stop. I second that whole comment for instance thing because I can't tell you how many diehard readers I have 
who went and took a chance on my books because I had them at an actual reader conference. And I know right now it's kind of like, eh. but just getting your books into readers' hands however you can is mm -hmm. is huge because those that's how it kind of mushrooms and it's really great. Um, you j it's right now is really hard, but you know. Yeah, no, I, that's it. I just spindled off at the end. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. um, let's see, I'll, I'll piggyback on everything that um, that Rachel and Jen have said, but of course, you know, because we're training. So there's two ways, two avenues. You've got no money, mm -hmm. some money, and a lot of money. I'll start with a lot of money because most of us, most, most authors just can't do that. If you have a lot of money, you get yourself a good promotion company. Mm -hmm. uh, give me books. Um, um, oh my goodness. Give me books, Grace. I can't think of the name of that company. Enticing Journeys. Mm -hmm. um, those are like, those are companies you can use. And then you got the stratosphere. You can go social butterfly, you know, mm -hmm. you know you've got that range of companies, but you get someone to, to pound the pavement for you to reach out to their list, their database of bloggers and readers and reviewers, right? As if you have a lot of money mm -hmm. or you have a, um, a, a base already. So then for those that have a little bit of money, there are a couple of options that you have. Again, you could go with promotional companies and you just get the smallest package you can afford. Mm -hmm. Um, Sierra London put out a book called Ben P and it is absolutely positively the way to go. But if you don't want to pay for it, it's pretty much everything that everybody's already said. It's your branding, your engagement, your networking and promotion. I mean, it's what you're already doing, but she's got little spreadsheets and she's got the narrative and in a Facebook group. So it, it helps you get it done, but it's building your brand engaging not just with authors but also with readers with bloggers and instagrammers i cannot stress enough how tacky i think it is remember these are all my opinions and send your you know fail, uh, flame mail to me um i can't stress enough how tacky i think it is to dip into somebody's dms that you've never had any kind of a relationship with saying hi can you sell my bag can you read my bag you know, go to this bookstagrammer or to this author, let's start with the bookstagrammer, go to their Instagram, right? And on there, they're going to tell you either I am accepting or not accepting mm -hmm. ARCs, or they're going to give you a link. Go there and see what the requirements they have are for mm -hmm. ARCs. Then follow that process. But also while you're there, follow them, see yeah. what they're doing, like mm -hmm. them. There's yeah. one lady, she does, I want mm -hmm. her to read my book, but she does nails she does her nails based on the book and there's another lady that'll dress up barbie dolls and then yeah and it's just so cool the things that they do so you know go on instagram and look up bookstagrammer another thing if you don't have a lot of money i'm mean, sorry if you have a little bit of money is going on to tiktok mm -hmm. um you're going to need time though, but I'm going to tell you right now, my daughter who really does not read romance, she comes up to me and she's talking about blue aliens. And I was like, what? And she says something. And I said, are you talking about, and this is literally what I said, are you talking about Ruby Dixon's Ice Planet Barbarians? <laughs> and she goes, of course, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> she says, of course, you know what I'm talking about. I'm like, yeah, but how do you, you know about it? TikTok. <laughs> Ruby Dixon has hit the bestseller list almost a decade after some of those books were published because of TikTok. Yeah. And it, I mean, TikTok is putting people on the list. So, but before you get into yeah. TikTok and start saying, buy my book, buy my book, get into the community, follow Bookstagram, Black Love, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Romance Love, follow the hashtag, see what is being posted, mm -hmm. find an author, hey, I'm new to this, I would love to figure this out and I don't wanna make take any missteps, and then do that. But there's no, nobody just wants you talking about buying my book the whole time because you know what's gonna happen? They're gonna ostracize so, you. Engage, now, like engage with people. That's it, and not, and not just, but see, buy my book is not, is, is it, they consider that engaging. Um, it's also, I love your book. I like you if not, you fangirl over all. Yeah, that's not like what them. I mean, but. Yeah, but you know, some people. Um, and then finally, if yeah. you have no money, yes, you can promote your book with no money, but it's going to be a lot more work because mm -hmm. you're doing all the work. So it's all of that brand engagement network promo, mm -hmm. but you're doing it on your own. You can get a free Canva account. There are free yep. templates through DIY mm -hmm. book covers. Good all money. of these companies have free tools mm -hmm. that you can use to push it out there and then just start literally pounding the virtual pavement. Look at all, you know, I have a list of about 700 
Okay, fine. It's closer to a thousand Facebook groups where you can do promotion. Start building that list mm -hmm. and go in there and see what are the requirements yeah. for promo? Reach out to those people. They actually say, if you want to promo your book in here, reach out to admins, reach out to the admins. And that's how you, in my opinion, that's one of the ways that you can um, give you know, book marketing for free. But I will tell you one thing that Rachel said that is absolutely the truth. If I were to turn my camera that way, you would see the um, Van Dyken shelf because I do have some Rachel Van Dyke and books, not just because I'm a fangirl, but honey, if you're giving out a free book, I'm taking the free book. Okay. Exactly. And then she signed the book. So of course I had to love it and smell it. And then, um, but at the same time, those books that she didn't um, write, but those books that she didn't autograph, I'm a huge um, NaNoWriMo person. I'm a, a, a municipal liaison. So when we had a uh, blind date with the book, you, that you're a skippy person in 2016, 17, 18, when I saw Rachel at RT, I took some of her books, I wrapped them up, I put mm -hmm. a little description on the cover and gave those books away. I remember and, that. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's good. <laughs> Giving away books, however you can. And if you can't do books, I don't have the card. I just had it. They used to give away cards, and you can have a, a book funnel code. Book funnel is twenty dollars yeah. for the entire year, and you can give your book away free for mm -hmm. twenty bucks. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I love Samantha, it. Samantha, I hope that helped. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we have we have uh, some other questions that I want to take, and those of you that are out there wondering whether or not. You should type your question into the, the chat. Go ahead and type it into the chat. Uh, we're getting short on time. So this is going to be our last call for questions because there's so many good ones that I want to make sure that we get to. But uh, type those questions in the chat and hopefully we'll have time to get to them. Uh, so let's go to Catherine's question. Um, and this, I'm assuming this is going to be a pretty quick answer here. So she said she started looking um, and then COVID hit and is still here. Where can you find writers? who can be those kinds of friends? This is when we were talking about your support group. When you say those book, like I would go, like I mentioned Bang Book Club. I would join Bang Book Club because they have, their engagement is ridiculous on Facebook. So join Facebook if you haven't. Bang Book Club is a very, uh, they're not, they're, there's no bullying. It's very like inclusive of any background, age, ethnicity. I mean, whatever, whatever you come from, like they are just incredible in there. And that's one place that I even as an author go into to get suggestions for books to read when I need a book to read. They're, they're, they're fantastic. Like they, you have like 17,000 members, but yet everyone still talks to each other. Like the last post had like a hundred and something comments. People are like engaging and talking. And so I would join places like that. And I would even don't be mm -hmm. too shy to make a post saying, Hey, I'm a new author and I need some author buddies. People will comp like, it's crazy. How often people be like, Oh my gosh, I'm so lonely. I'll read your book. Like, or like <laughs> yeah. I'll, read it for you. I'll help you. So yeah, I, I think that is, yeah. that's, that's the key is going into those groups. And if you're really shy, there's some authors even have smaller groups on top of the, like subgroups that you can go into. And because a lot of authors, they don't just have fangirls in their groups. They have actual like um, um, other authors in their groups. Like I'm in mean, a lot of other author groups. So I, I say just trying to find those, um, it, which I know is sometimes scary and it's hard when you're new. But I think the minute you go into some of those groups and you realize how inclusive they are, you're going to be very feel very, very at ease and very, uh, very okay in sharing, you know, your content and, and, you know, asking, asking for friends, because that's what we have to do, because we have, we have a pandemic. So it's okay to be like, hey, guys, <laughs> I'm alone here. I need help. Um, I'm going to be super rude. I need to go check on baby really quick. So I'm going to just like, rude. Yeah, that's not rude. Just run really fast. <laughs> that's not rude. Go, on. go back. <laughs> go do it. Go do it. <laughs> Yeah, um, what she what what she was saying about groups, I would throw out the Wicked Wallflowers Coven. There yeah. is a they have a po podcast, the Wicked Wallflowers, mm -hmm. and they have a private group on Facebook, which is so well taken care of by the administrators, um, letting people in and making sure when someone gets in that shouldn't have, getting them back out again. It's so great. They've got a lot of up and coming people who are writing and they've gotten together and there's now offshoots of the wick of wallflowers coven doing writer groups and all other kinds of things so it, it just happens naturally with us right because if you're a romance reader um that that's how you become a romance writer most of the time is because you started off as a reader 
And that's what I mean by engagement is you have this meaningful engagement with people either on Instagram or TikTok or wherever it is, you can build relationships that way. I mean, one of my close friends who, um, I won't call her out, but I will say she's a big author. <laughs> But she, we met over. I know who it is. Twitter. She needed a. She needed help with a promo. She had her cover, and she needed it turned into a JPEG because they only gave her a PDF. And I'm a photographer, and I'm like, yeah, I can do that. Just send it to me, and I did it. And like, we go on retreats all the time. She's one of my closest friends in the whole world. But it all started on Twitter. That's mm -hmm. it. You when you you need to engage with people, but it needs to be meaningful engagement. You got to put yourself out there and have really meaningful conversations, and that's how you build friendships long distance at this point, which can turn into not so long distance in the future. Mm -hmm. But the one thing I love about this particular community is how, in general, we're so open and caring so much more than other communities, other writing communities I've been part of. Mm -hmm. And so you just have to, you have to put yourself out there and uh, you'll find people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love it. Do you need to go Alexis. out? Anything you want to yeah. add? Um, just three things, because you know, good Catholic. The first thing is um, um, your uh, NaNoWriMo. You can look to NaNoWriMo mm -hmm. for now because there's a huge, there's a huge group of writers there, and you can go and meet. And there's always somebody writing romance in a in a NaNoWriMo group. If not, just text me, you know, on uh, DM me. Um, the second would be um, uh, Val Vi Para mentioned Discord. There are so many writing groups on Discord. But I, but I would caution you, depending upon your learning mm -hmm. style and modality and depending on whether or not you're ADHD, Discord may not be the thing for you because there, there's a lot going on and it could be very distracting. Yeah, I can't. So just take a look at that. Yeah. Um, and then um, also uh, be careful when you use the word friend, okay? Uh-huh. <laughs> That's why I said friends, friends, and friends, because Brand. people I meet on Facebook, it's rare that immediately we're going to have this instant connection, this bond, this thing. So just, just know going in that you know it's 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 you, you can't be in somebody's inner circle just because they look really cool and you think you'd be a great match. Just know that you're not going to just jump instantly into somebody's inner circle, but that doesn't yeah. mean that you still can't have some kind of um almost a camaraderie with them, like a, like, I forgot the word Rachel used, but it, it buddies, it could be your author yeah. buddies, but that doesn't mean they are, go you are going to end up in their inner circle. And I just caution people on that because I see people getting disappointed because they're not yeah. in their inner circle. And I'm like, honey, they just met you. What, mm -hmm. what are you expecting? So that's my only thing. Yeah. Gotcha. All good tips. Okay. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's off, see. Off, off, off. Um, Denise had a question about something that Rachel, you touched on a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, she was talking about pen names and the difference between or what you think about uh, using one pen name versus um, multiple pen names when you you write in different genres. What are your thoughts on that? That's a tough one because I you have to. That's, I think that's changed a lot after the Me Too movement, quite honestly, because we have, I mean, some publishers at one point were even taking office romances because they're like, well, there's no consent, you know, it, like it was just very, so like, it, and because things changed, I would actually, if I could do it over again, and I think we are going to end up doing this because we have stuff coming out, I'm going to be doing our Van Dyken um, for like my more like new adult stuff, um, and then keeping my normal name for everything else, and we're going to start splitting stuff up. So you don't need to necessarily change your name. Um, you could just do like initials. Like Jennifer Armentrout does like Jay Armentrout. She does, you know, she kind of like divides it up and stuff. Um, and she did that, I think, a little bit later on in her career too, after she start, stopped writing YA and kind of went into more like mature mm -hmm. contemporaries. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's some wisdom in that just because you don't want some 13-year-old kid stumbling upon like BDSM or, you know, <laughs> like a book that you're like, oh, that was, that was definitely for someone that... <laughs> It's over the age of 18 and, you know, like, you don't want their parents finding it and being like, where did you get this? So I think that with, with all the stuff with consent and, you know, we have a lot of these, like, erotic, which are great, like, romances that there's bondage and there's, like, you know, there's a lot of stuff in there that could possibly, if you're under 18, could be maybe an issue, you know what I mean? So I think that it, it depends on what you're writing, but I think if you, if that's kind of where you're going to go with that. And I would definitely separate it and just either initial it or just make it to where there's at least like 
in your bio, they can say, oh, writing underneath this as this and this or writing this way so that you don't have to worry about that issue because that's something that would like lay on your conscience, I feel like. And I think in the world that we live in, there's just so much stuff out there right now that you just have to be really careful. Mm-hmm. A lot more careful than we used to have to be. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else want to add to that? Okay. Um, so many good questions out here. Alexis. Um, Alexis K. <laughs> not Alexis I was like... <laughs> But Alexis Rourke, you kind of touched on this um, question that Alexis Kay has asked. No, um, she talks about the way I did. yeah. <laughs> so she talked about um, how the book business seems to re- rely on already having money and other resources that you can invest in. Um, but what do you do if you're starting with nothing? What time blocking. Like? Yeah, time blocking. Tell you us a little bit more about block. that. Uh, you start with. I don't have. Oh, here, this is um, the HB90 planner, which you don't have to buy because again, I'll give you that link for a free one, but it's the fastest I can get to a time blocking calendar. So you you um, you look at your day and you say, I'm going to spend, hey, don't panic people, okay? <laughs> don't panic. So you get yourself a time block. Ca- I said, don't panic and you're panicking. <laughs> Jen, don't, Jen, look away. Jen, look away. So you see this? Okay, and I'm going to put it down. Putting it down, right? So you just say on a given day, you say I'm going to spend from 10 to 12 every day or whatever the time you have on advertising, on promotion, on marketing. And you set aside time every day for it because I'm going to tell you right now, if you wait till the weekend to get back to some people, you may miss something. Um, so set aside time every day, whether it's 15 minute, 30 minute blocks, whatever it is, set aside time, list everything you need to do, writing, marketing, I'm oh, sorry, let me break down marketing, writing, advertising, promotions, uh, newsletter swaps, uh, joining Facebook groups. I literally have a, on every Thursday, I have a, a long list of Facebook groups and every Thursday I go in and I join five to 10 of them because there's a maximum 20 you can join before Facebook. Uh, starts throttling you. No, they didn't write it down. It's something you find out the hard way. Um, <laughs> it's true. It's welcome to Facebook. So you you just you block time for these things and you do it during that time. Mm-hmm. Does it require some discipline? Yeah. Just because I colored it doesn't mean I do it, but it's there. Um, but um, you set aside the time and you get it done. I mean, it's. I know it sounds simple, but it, it really is. That's the only way I can think of. Because if you say, I'm going to do writing from 10 to 12. Okay, well, what aspect of writing? Actual writing or the business of writing? Mm-hmm. And you need to separate the two mm-hmm. and not let the business take over the actual writing. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Any other thoughts yeah. on that? No. That's- well, hold on. <laughs> she said, she said, can invest in other resources like hiring team members to help you manage things, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I wear a cross, right? Um, And it's not just neck jewelry. So people are in my DMs all the time asking me questions about being a VA. Now, I'm not extending an invitation to every single person that's watching this. (laughs) But if you have a question about doing things, just just DM bossy, bossy pants. I mean, it's I, I help people. It's what I do. But you can also find mm-hmm. anybody, Sarah mm-hmm. Cunningham, any of these people who are who are VAs or PAs. You can say, mm-hmm. "Hi, I need help about this. How did you do this?" And see if they help you out. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do think that you don't have to have. I think everybody needs a VA. But if you can't have a VA, then again, time blocking those tasks that you would normally assign to a VA. You make time yeah. for them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. When I so I started with like nothing. Sorry. No, go ahead, Jen. <laughs> I start. I, I I literally started with nothing. I was just out of college. Um, we had a house that we could barely afford. I, we had four kids, and I literally had nothing. And I wrote this book, and I got it put together, and managed to. I exchanged for services, so I have a writer friend who also does copy editing, and she copy edited my book in exchange for me photographing covers for her. Um, I have this thing that I can exchange and everybody has a thing that they can exchange. Mm-hmm. And if you find the right people, you can trade in order to get things done. But a, a lot of it, the rest of it, once the book is out there, um, 
I really was working all the time on promotion online and making connections and engaging other people and trying to get my book out there. And granted, it was a different world in 2011. If you put up a good book, it was going to sell. Now, that's incredibly hard, but there are still, if you get in with the TikTokers and the bookstagrammers like we talked about, it's it's finding the, where you're comfortable being a lot of the time. If you hate Twitter, that's not where you're going to go, obviously. If you like um, visual-based things, try Instagram. If you're comfortable on Instagram, start engaging there and start trying to move things around on Instagram. But you have to, it takes a lot of work to start with nothing. And every time I made, like, I think my first, my first month I sold, I want to say maybe eight copies of my book. And all of that money went into then um, doing an ad or promoting or whatever. Like it was 10 bucks. So I think back then you couldn't boost posts, but it was something else. Um, I was doing Google ads or something crazy that you don't do anymore. Anyway, all the money that I made off of the book went straight back into the book for years and years. That's how I built it up and, and became able to do other things, you know, uh, later on. My dog is doing on my dress, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you can do it. It's a, it's a lot, a lot of work, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it. If you have a good book, and that's the basis for that's all of this. For everything. Yeah. Everything, all of it. You have to have a good book. And once you have that good foundation to build on, you can do it. You just, it's going to be a lot of work depending on how much you can throw behind. <laughs> I got to go for a second. <laughs> <laughs> the 50 pound puppy taking over. Yes. Yes. Busting around. <laughs> right. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so we're going to pivot really quickly. Uh, we're talking about big business here in in writing. Uh, but Jenny asked a good question, which kind of ties into what Jen was just talking about, right? She said, how much do you find that your first draft changes from the finished draft of your novels? And if we're talking about getting down to a good book, which is going to help with book sales, we need to be honest about this. What do y'all think? Yes, Rachel, what do you think? Under the bus, woo! <laughs> Sorry about those skin marks. <laughs> we were both ready to point each other. Like, um, oh, I hate you so much. Um, so, okay, so I, okay, so my, I think, I think, okay, this is a good answer. I promise. So Ooh. as you write, like I've been writing since 2011. So as you write, um, things you 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 get better and you change and you kind of develop a different habits, different writing skills. One thing that I have always kept um, that I've always done, even no matter what my schedule is, is I write very linear. So I write straight through. I do not revise anything. If I have misspelled words, if I have grammar, if I have anything, I just go because a lot of people will sit there and have like seven drafts of seven different books on their computer that they've never been able to finish because they're so worried about the chapter before being so perfect. They've revised it like five to 10 times and it drives me crazy. And I'm like, I know you're an editor. I know that you're a perfectionist. I know you have your master's in, in writing, but like you can't do that. Like, and, and for some people it works and if it works for you, great. But for the majority of us, like 90%, you're going to be constantly stuck, constantly going back, constantly fixing things, which means you have to fix something else in the future because you changed how old they were in the past. Like it doesn't, it just doesn't align. It doesn't make sense. So for me, I will start, like right now I have a book that I'm writing, um, My Summer in Soul, and I'm writing it from this to this. And if I do have a couple scenes that I think, um, like if I have 15 minutes, like Alexa said, like if I have 15 minutes, then I'm gonna go back and I'm going to um, use those 15 minutes to write a really quick scene out of order. But for the most part, I write completely in order. And I make sure that I make, if I need to make notes, because I have to get up or do something like she said, you only have a couple minutes. Then I write that in the actual, I, I write in Ulysses, so I'll write that in my style sheet or write it after the last paragraph. So I know where my head is at and where I was going. And the other thing is don't delete things. Like, yes. <laughs> I think it sucks. It, it might suck. But for the most part, like when you go to bed and you wake up again, you're like, I'm really good at this. Like it's, it's because you're tired or you have the wrong mindset. And so I always say, don't delete stuff until you absolutely like spend 24 hours actually thinking about it don't stop 
keep going. I spell nightmare wrong every single time because I type it way too fast. I did it today and I was like, oh, you suck. So like, but don't go back and fix it because that's what editors are for. That's what a good right. content editor is going to do. They're going to go in and be like, you can't spell nightmare, you guys. It's been 11 years. Like I still do the wrong dialogue tags, but I don't change it because she knows when she goes in, she just has a fine in her place. And like, I was running Monica Robinson and she was like, do you realize, like, am I doing it wrong? I was like, oh no, I do it wrong every time. I just don't, I'm not going to go back and delete it. And she's like, okay, you're an idiot. And I'm like, yeah, well, you know, <laughs> but it works for me. So, so that's what a good editor is for. And I think that that's where revisions come in. That's where like you do not one edit, you do three edits. You do your main content, your developmental, ed you know, whatever edit, if you're traditional, and then you do your uh, your lines and then you do your proofs. And then you do usually after that, like a galley where you go through and like at it. So I think that's definitely where that comes in. Um, especially for first time writers who are trying to go in there and like perfect everything to have that perfect book. Like a lot of times it's those flaws where you're, write, where you're writing in the run on, run on sentences and you're doing stuff that maybe people are like, oh, I don't know about that, that causes that style. Um, a good example for that is Colleen Hoover. Like her books are all very different and very stylistic. And I think that's what makes people love her books so much is they're not perfect. Do you know what I mean? So, so making everything so grammatically perfect. So all these things usually ends up making it to where it's not as good versus if you just like, were just you and just wrote, wrote your emotion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. The end. Now it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> what she said next. <laughs> no, but it's okay. You know, it's true, but it, it's true. If I, I could add a little bit, but what you said is absolutely true. I mean, you, you hit every single point. I mean, I have two uh, free Facebook courses. Remember when I told you I had a really demanding job? So I created two Facebook courses. One is called Nine Weeks to Nano, and the other is called Read, Revise, Edit, because I homeschooled my kids and writing is my thing. So just helping people write. I mean, it's 60, Nine Weeks to Nano is 63 days of prompts. And the first two weeks is nothing but brainstorming. And I'd say, give yourself permission to play in your story world so that when November 1st hits, you're ready to write a dirty first draft or whatever it is you need. I, my Millie, Millie Belly my editor, she, my development or ed, developmental editor, she says I write clean and that's just my, my brain. You know, I have to have it an outline and I have to go from that because I need to know where I'm going. But um, you, you just, just write until you finish and stop mm -hmm. editing, especially, and I, and I, Gosh, I'm so thankful that you said that, Rachel, because so many authors have, like, you know, present company included, have all of these drafts because they're trying to make it perfect. And it's like, sweetie part, sweetheart, honey bunny, cupcake. <laughs> you know, even though they say Hemingway may not have said it, it's the truth. Everybody's first draft is shit. Oh, mm -hmm. oh public library. It's, it's poop. Everybody's first draft is poop, you know? So give yourself permission to write poop and then keep going. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I curse on the library. <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> right? Well, the library is closed, right? It's okay. <laughs> Jen, what do you think? I have such a potty mouth. <laughs> um, I I agree with all of that. I my so specific to the question, my books change so much from the beginning to the end. I am a pantser. I have tried and tried and tried all different kinds of things. And, and um, I am a pantser. <laughs> I'm going to be a pantser apparently forever. So I start writing and then I just go. And I have to write it in order. I can't write out of order. Um, and it's, it's, my process is that I have to write. And then when I come back to writing, I have to reread. Mm -hmm. edit through that and then write again until I get somewhere around the middle at which point I can't write for months sometimes um <laughs> I thought you had calmed down um I'm, I remember my second book I was stumped for like five months I didn't know what happened next and I couldn't figure it out and I so I just left it and four and a half five months later I came back to it because I knew what, because my brain figured out what was supposed to happen next. That's my process. And unfortunately for me, I can't get away from that. Um, so I have to like revise as I go along, but not, I don't, I don't know how to explain it because it's not like your end revisions. Cause I still go through all the processes of revisions and I have a developmental editor and I have a copy editor, you know, copy of mine edits and all that other fun stuff. But I have to, revise as I go along in order to keep my brain 
in the right space because also as soon as I write something, I forget what it was. <laughs> so I don't really know what happens in my books. I have kind of like an overall idea, but it's gone. My brain does not maintain, like I can't tell you. I just got this dress. <laughs> I thought it would be better if my husband and my kid went out to dinner while I was doing this, but apparently they should have taken her with him. Anyway, um, I, I, it's, it's coming back down to your own process, but my final books are nothing like what I start out with. Mm -hmm. They're, they're just yeah. not. And I also, I mean, because I do the pictures inside my books, I have, I have that in mind as I'm writing. Mm -hmm. what pieces of it are going to be visual and the rest of it that I want to take pictures of, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like the whole process is extensive, but I love it. I love revising. I love editing. I don't like copy edits, but I love revising mm -hmm. and like tweaking and getting in there. Ma'am. I was just going to say that um, I feel like I should, the voice of reason should be here because y'all are weirdos. I'm kidding. I do not write literally linear. <laughs> Forget Read. it, okay? I don't uh -huh. write from chapter one to the end, from the prologue or whatever, to the epilogue. Look at me. I don't, I don't write from this way. I write the scenes that excite me. Mm -hmm. um, the scenes that, especially there's some scenes like, oh my gosh, I, I, I've seen this so clear. Mm -hmm. So I write that scene. But I've also heard of authors like, I believe Helena Hunting and at least one other author, um, they said they write the dialogue first and then they write the story around the dialogue. So everything that you're hearing is just what works for that author. And I, that's all I wanted to say mm -hmm. is find the process yeah. that works for you. Absolutely. Yeah. I have so, friends who have such, I'm, I think it's Courtney Milan has this like snowflake approach to writing ooh, where Randy Iverson. Just, mm -hmm. it, it's, I, it doesn't even make sense to my brain. I'm it starts just like, with a sentence. It's like yeah, a fractal like, with a sentence wow. and then you build, build, build. And then she's got all mm. these different pieces and then she has to put it in order. So she's not even really sure mm. where the stuff fits until she's got it all written. <laughs> and then, she, see, Rachel, you know. Yes, that's, this I is don't know. <laughs> right? And you guys are eating chest pain. <laughs> I think I saw it. Well, we did, it was like the physical. She has it on longhand, too. I just get pale. <laughs> longhand? Yes, no, she, writes, she writes longhand. And no, oh, so it's no, like, so find, you have to find your process. Absolutely. That gets you from A to Z <laughs> in the best amount of time that you can do it. How's that? What you mean from draft <laughs> to published? There yeah. it is. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. All right. Uh, we have time for one more um, question. And this is a question that um, you all received before. So this isn't coming from um, any of our um, our guests, our viewers. But before I get to this question, uh, I want to make sure that I mention that there is a survey that Romance Genre Con would like for you to fill out. So <clears throat> make sure before you leave that you visit the link that they have populated right there in the comments and let us know what you thought about this panel uh, discussion this evening. I know you're putting it in the comments, but put it in the survey because they need it in the survey too. Okay. Uh, so final question, and we're going to make this as quick, I got 20 for everybody that, as, yeah. quick as, <laughs> as quick as you can. Um, what is the most important thing that an author can do tomorrow to make their business stronger? <laughs> I remember this question. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> it's really simple. <laughs> Anyone want to start? You know, I will start because I want to keep it short and quick. I, when, when I saw this question, I was like, it's really simple to me. Mm -hmm. And I, I just lost it. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> the most important thing an author can do tomorrow to make their business stronger. Write, mm -hmm. write, write a good mm -hmm. book. Finish the book. I mean, that's pretty much all I had to say. Yeah. And we, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. <And read. laughs> Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Write and read. That's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When authors say they don't read, I'm like, what? Ooh, that's <laughs> like, it, like, it's like a red flag to me. Like, don't, I mean, don't read in your genre. Yeah. Read. Read. Yeah. You read. Yeah. Read. Yeah. Just read. Read something. Study. That, You're you studying. Know, this is research. You're, exactly. This is all of it. It's research. Yeah. And also, you know, once you start writing things off, you'd be writing off all those books and movies and things. Yes. Talk to your own accountant, but. 
saying. <laughs> it's all I research. Think, yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. Jen. She's no, done. No, no, no. Don't worry about it. She's done. She died. <laughs> she <was. laughs> and then she froze again on me. So I was just I was like, keep going. The puppy's distracting her. Yeah, of course. No, she's um, I was going to say. She's literally trapped. She ripped a hole and she's trapped in my skirt. In so your this dress? Is for me. In your dress? Yeah. She ripped she eats Yeah, clothes. she ripped a hole and now she's trapped in it. Under the dress? <laughs> Clever. Like, like just seriously, just later we're gonna need a picture or something. Yeah, because... we're gonna need. We're gonna oh, post on Instagram. We're visual. We're we need a visual. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Rachel. Rachel, what do you what do you well, think? Like, you know. <laughs> no, I agree with both of them. I, I was in the same answer. The only thing I was gonna add to that is one thing that I see often is right readers readers. Um, authors will write just one book and then they're like putting everything into that book and then they're just like, okay, it's gonna be awesome. And I'm like, no, like you have to keep going. Um, you have yeah. to have more content, right? So owning a business yeah. is not just about selling one product. It's about selling multiple products. So maybe one genre doesn't work. Maybe another one does. Like for me, it wasn't until I started writing new adult that I really took off. So like, you just have to know, like, you can't just write one book and be like, sit at home and think, this is it. Like you have to keep going and get more product out there because the more front list you have, the more back list sells. The end. I love right. it. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. Um, <laughs> Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, ladies, thank you so much for this. This has been a lot of fun, um, super informative. I was taking notes over here. I know that our viewers were taking notes as well. Um, but thank you all for sharing part of your Friday with us here at Romance Genre Con and dropping nuggets that will hopefully create ripples um, all across the romance genre. Um, Again, those of you that are watching, if you haven't filled out that survey yet, make sure that you fill out that survey. It's in the comments. Uh, it's really quick. I promise it's painless. I promise it's painless. <laughs> but fill it out. It's really important uh, because it helps the library to know uh, what's working. And, you know, we can bring these ladies back next year if we, if it's, I'm going to cross my fingers. Right. I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> and we're going to bring Morgan back. <laughs> yes. Ladies, Morgan. thank you again for allowing thank me to join. Happy thank you. writing. Hey, writing. everybody. On behalf of the library, to our, our authors that joined us tonight, we want to thank you so much, Cynthia. Thank you so, so, so much. <laughs> uh, it's been wonderful to work with you over the years. I just really want to remind everyone real quick, you can catch her. Tuesday night, library live again, right in your living room. I want you to put it up on your big screen, right? The Olympics are over soon. <laughs> it's time to learn stuff again. So, um, Cynthia, you did a fantastic job. Um, you are one of the warmest human beings that we know. <laughs> Thank you for giving us your talent tonight. We do have a special treat for everyone. Um, one of the things that made tonight really, really special is that Rachel Van Dyken is having one hell of a week. And she had a huge box set release. So we're going to play her box set video before we get out of here tonight. Drop your comments. Good, bad, ugly. We want to know. We like to take action. Any kind of action needed. So uh, thank you all for hanging in with us. This has been day four of Romance Genre Con 2021. Put it on your calendars. We are in person. Woodneath Library Center 2022. First weekend in August. Historical romance is the theme, but all business romance writers are welcome. Thanks, Cynthia. Thanks, Morgan. Megan, roll that beautiful bean footage. <laughs>